Hello, everyone. Welcome to an episode of the WSO Something Wonderful in Washington County. My name is Monica Merrill, and I'm a board member for the Washington Symphony Orchestra. You may have watched some of the other programs we've done about the symphony. In the past, we've talked about the various concerts that were to be offered, and I interviewed a young lady, Kate Skillings, who attended Peters Township High School and was a student musician performing with the WSO prior to college. During this program, we're going to focus on some wonderful opportunities the WSO offers for young musicians and vocalists. My guest today is Adam Schaefer, the general manager of the WSO. He's responsible for daily operations of the symphony. He coordinates concert performances and everything else to keep the WSO running, including the Young Artist Competitions. Welcome, Adam. Hi, Monica. Thanks for having me again. Let's jump right in and talk about the, the programs that the symphony offers for the students. Sure. Let's first talk about Side by Side, which is the one Cape Skillings participated in. Absolutely. That's the one we're working on right now in conjunction with the March concert. Uh, we have high school students uh, come in and play side by side with orchestra mentors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's basically any instrument uh, you see on stage, uh, even tuba, we have a tuba this year, uh, can sit and play with an orchestra mentor. Uh, now, unlike the other programs we're going to talk about, this program is not limited geographically. Uh, students from outside Washington County can come in and sit with uh, the orchestra as well and play. Now, unfortunately, since it's for the March concert, the deadline for that's passed. But what are some of the criteria about a student who might be interested in doing that sort of a... Well, the deadline is passed, but uh, for certain instruments where, you know, if you look at the stage during one of our concerts, you see a lot of strings. You know, there might be just a few trumpets, two flutes, but string instruments you see a lot. Uh, so we always have a need for string instruments. So if anyone out there, a high school student or knows a high school student uh, who plays the violin, viola, cello, uh, we can incorporate them. Uh, Miss Skillings, who you uh, previously referenced, uh, played with us all year. So uh, there are opportunities for high school string players outside of the March concert. So I encourage all, any of them to contact us through the website, which we're going to talk a little bit later. Um, but um, yeah, the, it's just. Um, well, it's, it sounds like this, you know, strings are always a big issue for the orchestra. Um, it's interesting, I learned that certain pieces require more strings, sometimes they require less strings, sometimes it's, you know, more brass or whatever. But usually string players are much in demand. So if you've missed the side by side, you still have an opportunity. You can contact the WSO, reach out, and we'll try to get you involved because that's an ongoing need. So that sounds Yeah, that sounds the side-by-side -side program, the deadline for that is usually in January. So, mm -hmm. you know, you look for that again next year. Uh, we post that application in the fall. But it's a good point you bring up, Monica. Our musician needs change from concert to concert depending on the repertoire. If we have a jazzy repertoire, sometimes we'll add a saxophone section. Saxophones aren't usually on stage with us, but they are about uh, once a year. Uh, and, you know, there's different instruments such as the contrabassoon, bass clarinet. Uh, they're added from time to time. So it, it's it continuously, you know, no two concerts have the exact same lineup of instruments or musicians. So how many students about this year do you think we'll have? Well, we have 10 in the side-by-side -side program. It's a good, good mix of instruments. We have a cellist, like a uh, tuba player, as I mentioned, uh, trumpeter, uh, flute, clarinet, so um, yeah. trombone. So it kind of hits all the, all the boxes there uh, this year. It, that's what we like to see. A couple percussion percussionists, too. So um, good representation and from four different schools as well. That sounds great. Um, so. They usually are high school students. Is that the criteria? They they need to be in high school. They they do. Uh, if you know, sometimes we'll slip an eighth grader in there. We do have an eighth <laughs> grader this year. Uh, if they come highly recommended. Uh, how the side by side program started kind of started kind of informally many years ago, uh, when our musicians would have students and then bring them in oh, okay. uh, to play with the orchestra. So that that's the case of the eighth grader right now. Um, Cool. His teacher is our principal uh, trumpet player and um, been studying together for years and uh, our principal trumpet player knows he's good enough to come in so they brought him in in eighth grade. So, um, you know, we're, we're open to anything like 
uh, you know, we do have rules for these for this opportunity, but uh, you know. Well, there are a series of rehearsals, and the and the whole point of this, it's an opportunity for a student to go ahead and be able to elevate their their skills by performing with an orchestra. So there are rehearsals that we're expecting them to attend. Absolutely, this opportunity has evolved. You know, uh, about seven or eight years ago, uh, the students just joined towards the end, and we found you know it was kind of designed that way out of courtesy to their schedule, but we mm -hmm. found that they actually wanted to come to all the rehearsals because it made them a better player, gave them an opportunity to practice more. So now, you know, they're all the rehearsals our regular players are, you know, are typically there's six rehearsals plus a dress rehearsal for each concert, and the side-by-sides typically attend all of those rehearsals. So those students for the side-by-side -side will have a big performance at the March concert. We'll show a graphic about that a little bit later. Yes. But um, that's that's like a formal presentation of the students who've committed their time and are doing this. Absolutely, they're recognized in the program. Uh, our artistic director Hugo Icatch, he uh, congratulates them on stage, and they each receive a nice certificate at the end of the program, confirming their participation as well. So it's a, it's a nice program. So any of you high school students who've missed this opportunity can still reach out to the symphony to go ahead and give a call if you have an instrument you'd like to try to play with the symphony orchestra. Absolutely, and some of those other instruments outside of the string section, sometimes opportunities pop up in the summer. Uh, every year we end up doing one or two summer concerts. Uh, some of the regular musicians may be on vacation, so that's a good time for us to take younger musicians under our wing and give them opportunities Sort of give them too. an internship. So opportunity. You never know until, until you ask, so sure. if you have that interest, uh, you know, don't be afraid of the deadlines, just give us a call and we'll see how we can work together. Good. So in addition to the side-by-side, -side, the symphony offers a second um, opportunity for uh, students of music to uh, compete in the Young Artist Competition. Um, so as a result of that, we have two now. We have an instrumentalist competition and we have a vocalist competition. So let's segue and talk about that because there's still opportunities for people to go ahead and apply to be involved with this competition, which has a little different structure. It's actually a judged competition. Yes, and there's a prize involved with this, and it's a soloist uh, competition. Now, th this started out as a young artist competition, the, or called the concerto competition. Uh, instrumentalists only started back in 2008, 2007, 2008 season. Uh, first uh, winner played at the uh, February 2008 concert called Seascapes. And uh, actually, the first winner was from Trinity, but the second and third winner were from right here in Peters Township. So uh, that was interesting. But uh, both Peters and Trinity of Canada McMillan, different schools have provided us winners uh, for these competitions over the years. But around 2000, um, in the teens there, we were looking, uh, you know, to expand the. You know, there was a lot of vocalists that wanted to sing with us, but we didn't know really what to do with them. So we said, hey, why don't we add them to the Young Artist Competition? We got so many applications, um, and we had some winners too. You know, the first year we added uh, vocals to the Young Artist Competition uh, in the 16-17 season, we had Sydney Shook, a wonderful vocalist from Trinity. She won that competition. We had another young lady win in 2019. And, the judges talked about it, and it's kind of hard to compare the two skills, you know, an instrument right, and voice. Right. So we found uh, some interested uh, backers and supporters, and we split the contest up, uh, whereas now we have a prize for the instrumentalist and a prize for the vocalist, mm -hmm. and uh, this year they're both going to be performing at the May concert. Now, the prize, uh, thanks to some general generous donors and support, is up to $1,000 for each concert, but a lot of people, you know, look at the true prize as performing a solo with the symphony because we record every performance. Uh, as you'll see, uh, we have clips here to share with you later on. But you can take those clips uh, if you're one of these winners and put it as part of your CV uh, when you're applying to colleges or applying to uh, jobs or gigs or whatever. Now, Adam, the criteria for this is a little bit more controlled. So talk about the criteria. That do, it does have to be a Washington County resident. Yes, it does. And there it, is an uh, age limit. It, Washington County resident or attend a school in Washington County. Uh, the age limit, you know, we do stick to n ninth grade uh, to 12th grade for this particular uh, opportunity just because um, the skill level is usually much, much better uh, at, at ninth grade. 
And you know, having me, uh, you can apply all the way up to 12th grade. You do have four four shots at this. So um, we do enforce that age limit. But you know, the repertoire. You know, it's a classical piece. Um, you know, the application's online, and you'll see this. And you need an accompanist for the audition. You need to bring um, copies of music to audition. The deadlines for these are both March uh, 31st. But uh, as Monica and I are talking, there's several guidelines, several requirements. If you're interested in these, it's good to look at the uh, application as soon as possible. Because one of the things that needs to be understood about the competition, it is a competition. Again, there are rehearsals prior to the actual concerts. And then the expectation is that the winners will perform at the concerts. Now, we've started having two concerts, two performances for each concert. So again, there's a little bit of criteria about how you qualify to go ahead and participate, but then a second requirement about what the expectation is for the winners. And this, um, this is a live audition too. This isn't where you film yourself and send it in or send in a okay. resume. Uh, we do have live auditions for this. Uh, a few days after the deadline, you're called right away, given a time, and then you come in and audition for this. So. Uh, it's a very quick audition. I know a lot of people, you know, you just go in, you do your your piece, and it's always less than uh, 10 minutes, and then we move on to the next next person. So it's, it's, uh, it's a very high stakes competition for the, these uh, young people, but it's great experience, and uh, everyone who participates, even you know, if they don't win, they definitely learn something. And we, we have, uh, our artistic director always offers advice uh, to those that aren't selected that year. And this year, I do want to mention, for, particularly for our young vocalists, we do have some coaching opportunities if anyone wants to apply and wants some advice on uh, what repertoire to choose or you know, how to conduct the audition. Uh, you know, particularly for students who don't have a private instructor, uh, we, we can um, connect them with some volunteer coaches. Okay, so can you clarify something you just said because I didn't really understand sure. it to be this way. Do the, do the People who want to apply actually audition first and then they're taken into the competition? Or when you talk about their audition, is that their actual performance? That is the competition. Okay. Now, a lot of people, <coughs> and I'm glad you brought that up, Monica, because when they hear competition, they think this is a public competition, which it no. isn't. Well, it you isn't. Know, it, no. it, 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 and I always like to point that out because I get that question every year. Okay. So the auditions are just for our judges and a small group of people. The right. auditions are held at the Olin Fine Arts Center at uh, Washington w College. Yeah. And you know, it, it's just a small group of people. You, you come in there, you sing or you play, and then uh, the judges give their decision, usually the next day. So. Uh, yeah, the public part is the, the, the two winners are then selected and they, they perform okay. in May. Good, okay, that helps clarify it. And the judges uh, judging competition is done by the um, music director, uh, often part of members from the orchestra artistic committee. The artistic advisory group. The sure. advisory, excuse me, the advisory group. And then um, we do have sponsors for this and we're gonna talk in a minute about the prizes, but those sponsors sometimes participate in the judging competition also. Absolutely, because so, these are community members right. that support our mission. So let's talk about what the winners can get and how, how we've been able to expand that to $1,000. You have a, a couple of donors. Yeah, it evolved over the years. The, the vocalist competition is sponsored by an anonymous uh, funder, but the um, Instrumental. Instrumental competition is uh, actually sponsored by one of our supplemental musicians mm -hmm. who comes all the way from Virginia to play uh, cello at our concert. Yes, and uh, she actually began sponsoring this contest in memory of her parents who were also both musicians. And I think a, we have a slide of her parents just to give a little recognition. Dr. Isidore Wexler and Rella Blaustein Wexler, those are her parents. Okay, so the, uh, she has agreed to go ahead and sponsor the competition in their name. Yes, yes, and it's, it's a lovely uh, memorial to them. And uh, that's how we're able to offer the prize money that we do through this, this community support. And everyone recognizes uh, the great opportunity is for these students, not only for those selected, but those who go through the audition process you know, s several times, you know, I could, I could name four or five students just in my time with the WSO right. 
who auditioned, who sang, or who played, who didn't get it the first time. And then they talked to Hugo, our artistic director, uh, got some tips and Positive advice. Positive feedback, sure. And then next year it was just, you know, the, the growth in some of these students is just amazing. We, we had a young lady sing with us at our Christmas concert who was our winner in 2020. And it was just amazing to see in just two or three years the progress that she'd made in, in her singing. The Wexlers um, are a good example of pl paying it forward. Both the parents um, participate, were musicians on their own and uh, involved in the arts. And so they've been very good about uh, helping their daughter and the families proceed into the music environment. And so that's one of the reasons why Sheila has been gracious enough to sponsor this oh, absolutely. competition. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the uh, past winners. Um, we're going to show a clip of the um, one of the winners, Ryan Fulton, um, who won just recently. He was our most recent winner. Well, actually, uh, Ryan won in 2017. Sorry. I mixed them up too. Ryan and Aaron, they're, because they're both, they both played with us several times. They're both in our brass section, and okay. their dad's in our brass section. So and our brass section's often uh, filled with three Fultons there, and their mother sings too. So you're talking about musical families like the Wexlers. Uh, the Fultons are definitely another musical family that have supported us uh, for several years, too. But we're going to see a clip of Ryan, his brother Aaron, uh, played the French horn uh, this past uh, May at our anniversary concert in his uh, concerto competition uh, performance. So uh, definitely some, some talent there. Okay, so we'll see if we can tee up the clip of Ryan Fulton um, so that you can hear what a winning winner of a competi musical competition sounds like. That was a wonderful representation of a very talented young musician. Uh, no question about per perhaps why he won. Um, we really um, are 
fortunate to have a lot of very talented young musicians in Washington County. So the next clip is going to be another winner, Nancy Chow, who won several years ago, and she is a pianist. So we're gonna to go to a second clip. Again, this is not their full performance. This is just a clip to show you an example of the caliber of musicians that we've had come forward to the competition. So let's go ahead with Nancy Chow's performance. So that was another wonderful example of the level of competition that any of the musicians who wish to enter might be facing. And so Nancy has a really interesting story too, because please. like I said, these contestants need an accompanist. You know, a lot of times it's a pianist who comes in and plays piano alongside a trumpet or French horn or Or violin. the vocalist. Or the vocalist too. And she right. she had been an accompanist for a few years for vocalists, for I think violinist. So we said, hey, why don't you enter? You know, you're here accompanying everybody. Why don't you enter yourself? So her senior year of high school, she, she did and, and she won, so. So this is a good example of a fact that if you, even if you're not sure that you're at that level, go ahead and try to apply because it just, especially if you're a younger musician and have a few years, because it's definitely something you can look forward to doing over a course of a couple years. Now again, seriously remember the March 31st deadline for that. There is an opportunity to go ahead on the website and um, pull down an application. So these musicians will play at the concert that's going to be in May, May and that's yes. WSO in the USA. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have a graphic of that. Um, that'll be the second one that people are going to see. Um, tell us a little bit though, just remind people of how we can go ahead and get tickets so that people who are interested in seeing these young, the side-by-side -side in March or the Young Artist Competition winners in May can get the tickets. Well, the easiest way to get tickets is to go on our website at washington.org. Absolutely. And you click on uh, the button there and you know you can get as, as many tickets as you like. Um, it's, you know, the, it's, it's very, very easy. It takes a few minutes. If, if you don't, if you're not computer literate, you can call the number, it's 1-8-8. 1-888-71 tickets. That number is also on the website, and a ShowClix representative will be happy to help you. ShowClix is our third-party uh, ticket system that handles this for us uh, very efficiently. Now, one thing that's important for some of you out there: uh, in the past, the symphony used to have tickets at Citizens Library and at Peters Library, and we find that people really weren't buying them there. So we ended up going ahead and putting everything online. And if you want to send in a check which some people prefer to do, you can download um, a form, an order form, and then go ahead and send it in with your check. Um, it's just that what the volume of people buying tickets in person at the library was slim. So the other option obviously is to come to a concert and buy them at the door. But we do, and we do have two performances per concert. However, you know, the venue's a little bit smaller, which is why we went to two performances. So if you're really excited about coming, you wanna definitely buy your tickets in advance. Now, some other things that are important, 
the WSO, as part of our community partnership, offers free tickets, free admission for kids 12 years and under. Yes. And also for free, free for music tickets students, for music students. And music students can, you know, be up through senior in high school. And it's uh, not just for students who take private lessons or one-on-one -on -one lessons. It's also members of band, whether it be the jazz ensemble at school or the marching band or uh, members of the choir and uh, members of musical theater. So we want all young performers to take advantage of that program. Uh, they just come in. They can reserve their ticket online through show clicks or they can uh, sign up and get that at the door as well. So, uh, you know, one, one great thing about getting your ticket in advance online is we now can enable, starting with the season, we have the capacity to scan in tickets on smartphones. So you don't even need to print anything. You just buy your ticket online, have it on your phone, come in, just show your phone to one of our uh, symphony volunteers and matter of seconds, they just get you uh, into the auditorium. But that's absolutely not mandatory. You oh, no, it's not mandatory, but people, right. people, people love it. You know, but we still take the paper tickets, too. We just hand your paper ticket. Because at the door, you're going to get a paper ticket. So, right, right. Know. So just to reprise, the WSO offers two young artist competitions coming up. The deadline's March 31st. You can certainly go online, download the application, and uh, apply. Um, we'd like you to come to a concert and uh, see these kids. So thank you, Adam, for sharing Thanks, the information. Monica. Viewers, we say the WSO is something wonderful in Washington County because of the high caliber performances that they perform. But the second reason is the WSO is a true community partner dedicated to encouraging young musical artists to expand their skills and show off their talents. Now, if you want to explore more music and connect with the WSO, you can find us on various social media sites, and we'll have a graphic of that. We really appreciate you tuning in to this episode of the WSO, Something Wonderful in Washington County. We hope you'll attend a concert to hear the symphony and our talented young artists. They will really impress you. Have a great day. Thank you very much for, your t for part, uh, listening to our information.